people were asking about a thermosiphon. Basically, a thermosiphon is what you use when to circulate water without a pump. You have a head of water, in which case is 10 litres in this plastic jug here, and the weight of the water forces itself through the EGR cooler, and then once it boils and heats up, it forces itself up and back in, creating a loop of water without the use of a pump. Uh, this system, I think, might be more of an efficient way of doing it, because the water has to get basically boiling in here, so you're getting as much heat as possible out of the exhaust before it does a loop. Yeah, well, you know what I mean. So I've got uh, the multimeter with the thermocouple, which is stuck up in the end of the hose that you can't see in the top of the jug. I'll show you that in a minute. And this is all ready to get turned on. And I'll bring you back once it's up to temperature and up and running, and we'll take some measurements. We'll get the FLIR and we'll point it at various bits to see what temperature they're running at. Okay, we are running now. So we have the diesel heater, we have the EGR cooler, that is the outlet pipe that goes up to the tank, and that is the inlet pipe that comes in from the bottom of the tank. We've got the thermocouple on the multimeter, power supply, and I just put the exhaust piece pipe in to try and make the sound go that way. That is their 10 litres water tank. There's the bottom hose, there's the top hose going back in the top. It's now running. Now let's turn on the thermocouple and see what the temperature is. Okay, so it should go up in sparks because obviously as the water boils, it boils its way up the pipe and you'll get a boiling bit of water, and then a not so hot bit of water, and then a boiling bit. So that's coming out at 80 to 90 degrees. You can see the pipe wiggling from the, bo the boiling water. Alright, let's turn on the flare and see what it actually looks like. Okay, here we are in the flare. So, I've painted everything matte black so we can get approximate temperature. So there's the actual exhaust port of the heater and that's it's over 150 degrees. That's more than my, my flare can read. Here's the EGR cooler itself. So you'll notice it's sitting about just over 100 degrees. Remember there are some inaccuracies in the flare's temperature reading ability. We come down to the cool end. So there's the inlet pipe temperature. 30, 30, 19, 14. So that's probably the right temperature. 13 degrees inlet. Swing along to the outlet, which should be up near 100 somewhere. 100, 100, still. Hot pipe. Hot pipe. Hot pipe. All the way up to the jug, which is up here. It's still hot all the way at the jug. Now let's see if we can spin around the side of it to see if we can get some sort of temperature gradient here. Remember, it's not accurate because the jug is that's a white plastic in colour as opposed to a nice matte black. But you can see the temperature gradient, it's warmer at the top and it is at the bottom where you can see it heat sinking into the stool it's sitting on. So it's doing it, it's being a thermosiphon. We don't quite have the resolution to see the hot water actually uh, coming in. Oh, okay, there we go, that's a better picture. That makes it slightly better. See it's slightly warmer up there. See it's squishing hot water in every now and again. See if I can get a shot of that. There's it. Thermo siphoning. We got a glug of hot water now and again. So, yeah, it's totally doing it. It's being a thermo siphon. Let's 
out my attention. Please. Uh, 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 it says 78. 75, 76. So, somebody asked if it would be better to leave this running for. Oh, you can't even see my hand. Wait, wait a minute, wait a, wait a minute, wait a minute. Somebody asked if it would be more accurate if we left a larger volume of water running to see how. Again, you would take the temperature measurement of it as is, and then you would take another temperature measurement after so long it's expired, and then you can work out how many kilowatts that was in that amount of time. It wouldn't matter how long or how much water you leave running. Don't, well, it'll be different again because we've changed it into a thermosiphon and not pump driven, so we'd have to re-measure everything again and do it again. But the fact that it is totally working, it pipes hot, it's boiling water. And that's warmish water coming back. And the jug just now is it's warm. It's not. It's not roasting hot yet, but it's. It has heated some water. Probably better if I had the cap on. The steam wasn't escaping at the top. But this was just a quick experiment while we're waiting for the diesel heater with the built-in water heater a bit. Then we can trial this all again and see what it does. Thanks for watching, guys.